Hello and welcome to Business as Unusual. Um, happy Friday. My name is from Greater London Properties. Um, just to give a little bit of background um, as to what we're doing here every day, um, Properties have created a Facebook called Central London's Lockdown Support Group. This is to give a platform for those businesses, organisations and charities that are still running at the moment in central London. Um, and we started doing these lives um, at 11.30 every single weekday just to meet the people behind the scenes um, and give them the exposure that they deserve. Um, today we're with West End actor Nicholas McLean. Um, I am really excited to speak to you today, Nicholas. Um, the West End is just such an iconic part of central London. It's the reason for people coming to London, tourism of London. It was the first time, the reason I first ever came to London in the first place. Um, and uh, the West End is just loved by all. Um, so I think everybody is really keen as well to find out how lockdown has affected it um, and just learn more about your journey. So, um, hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, uh, Nicholas, um, tell, obviously I know a lot more about you, but um, tell um, everybody what you're currently starring as, because you're in Wicked, aren't you? Yes, I am. So uh, on January 20th, 2020, I opened uh, in Wicked playing the role of Bok, um, which is a show and a role that uh, I'm very, very excited to, to be playing. Yeah. I know that it's a, such a popular one in London. Um, I've seen it many times um, and I know quite a few people that have seen it many times, um, <laughs> which is uh, it's just just goes to show that even when you've seen um, a West End once, you don't just see it once. You, you If you have the opportunity to go to the West End, you, you do go several times. Um, I'm really intrigued and I know that a lot of people watching will be also really intrigued. Um, just your journey, like how you got started in theatre um, and what you went through to get there. Um, okay, so I guess it kind of all started for me in uh, in secondary school, actually. I had a really, really strong drama department um, at my secondary school, Kidbrook, um, and we got the opportunity to um, partake in some really exciting opportunities, like taking shows to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival and performing in uh, professional theatres across London, uh, Greenwich Theatre and Riverside Studios and places like that. Um, and then I guess I kind of realised that this was something I really, really wanted to do. Um, so I auditioned for drama schools um, to do music theatre because I enjoyed singing as well. Um, and I actually didn't get in uh, into drama school actually. And and I um, I was like, do you know what? No, no, they're wrong. So I um, I wrote a letter to Mountview and I said, you've made a mistake um, and you've missed out. And they uh, they let me come back and audition again that year. And then I actually did get in. Um, so unbelievable. <laughs> I love failure to success stories. These are my best stories. That's amazing. So, well, I'll, I'll let you carry on. But that's amazing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I did uh, three years in, uh, in musical theatre at Mount View Academy of Theatre Arts, which was in Wood Green and has just relocated to a purpose built uh, campus in Peckham. Um, so yeah, that was kind of how that all started for me. Uh, so I graduated there in 2015, I think. Um, and, then, and then kind of hit the ball rolling from there. That's unbelievable. How was your, um, with, obviously with your first auditions, um, when you first started kind of going out to the West End, do you have, uh, did you have to sign up to an agency that would get you these auditions or were you, were you aware of the auditions from your, from your drama school? Um, so we were lucky enough to have um, someone on staff at Mount View, Rebecca, who was kind of our industry liaison. So before you get an agent, she could kind of submit you for, for jobs and auditions and things like that. So I had a couple um, through Mount View before I ended up signing with an agent after our showcase. That's amazing. Have you ever known any um, any estate agents to go on the stage? <laughs> um, well, I'm thinking that perhaps you and I could do a job share when it all reopens. Yay! <laughs> I'd love that. <laughs> um, you be the A team, I'll be the B team. <laughs> um, so <laughs> just to find out, um, it, it's really competitive. Obviously, as you said, getting into the drama school um, it is a really competitive industry. Um, how did you find that? when you first kind of got into it? It, um, 
it really it is very competitive and I think that you have to have a lot of self-belief actually I think that's the main thing because there are hundreds more no's than yeses and you know it can really get to you but you just have to kind of believe within yourself that you have got what it takes and uh, and that you can do this because if you're not championing championing yourself then you know that's that's not going to get you anywhere yeah that's so true um because i think that that's obviously why you've done so well um and why you've appeared in so many um so i bet mount you're really pleased that they did take you on in the end because you, you've made something of it <laughs> i i appeared in the newsletter the other day as well thrilled thrilled to bits <laughs> amazing um, i'm sure kidbrook have given you some limelight as well I know. Do you know what? The saddest thing, though, actually, is that my school kind of doesn't exist anymore, actually. So they got taken over by an academy and I've, it's gone through like three different things now. But yeah, I mean, big up to Kidbrook and, um, and all the teachers there because I wouldn't be doing this without them. Oh, that's so nice. Um, and um, how did you find... So obviously, it's no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> With you, I'm just so excited to speak to Nicholas today. So I'm a little bit jittery. I'm sweating. Um, <laughs> with your experience, with your experience, so you've done you've done quite a lot, um, which is a really really impressive pipeline. Um, you have starred in quite a lot of the ones that I have seen, um, such as the Book of Mormon. Um, I'm going to go through each one individually really quickly. So how was how did you find the Book of Mormon? Like playing in the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon is quite possibly the most outrageous show in the world and i think the most exciting thing about it about being here actually is the audience reactions because you know a lot of them don't know what they've come to see they don't expect it um and so it's just the ride of a lifetime every single show was absolutely hilarious and i think i met some of the most incredible people in the show the casting team do a really good job of not just casting people that are incredibly talented but also are truly lovely and hilarious and you just want to spend all your time with them and i think that's really important when you when you walk in to a job and you're you're doing the same thing day in day out really uh, the people around you just make it so so brilliant so yeah I love that job so very very much and it was my first West End show as well amazing that's such a great experience to get started with that's fantastic um, you've also done one such as uh, Avenue Q um, and the Pied Piper <laughs> and South Pacific which is such such a good one and I remember watching uh, the TV the the film when I was younger um, and South Pacific is just goes back for years doesn't it really so um, but that was uh, was that a super fun one as well uh, I mean so South Pacific I did um in Guernsey it was kind of uh, it was South Pacific in concert um, and you know as an actor it's really really nice when someone tells you that they're going to put you on a plane and fly you to somewhere because automatically it's like oh it's a little bit of a holiday because there must be some downtime, you must find it. Um, and we were really, really lucky for that. So we went to Guernsey and the weather was amazing. And they uh, put us up in this villa and everyone was kind of staying in apartments next to each other. And there was a pool. So I mean, <laughs> as well as doing the show, which was great, and we had a great time and we got some great reviews and um, and the, the company were amazing. It was also a lovely little holiday you know, in the in the sun in Guernsey, getting in the pool, we were watching Love Island of an evening. It was just a really, really nice little trip away. Such a luxury. <laughs> Such a luxury. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Sister Act, I know that my, one of my colleagues actually had tickets uh, for this as well. I think, no, she's seen it already. She saw it with another colleague. Um, so she might have actually seen you. When, when were you in Sister Act? So I did Sister Act uh, in... Uh, God, Sister Act was um, at the in Stevenage, Gordon Craig in Stevenage, and that was in 2015. That was my second job out of college, actually, so long ago. Oh. <laughs> but I really enjoyed dressing up in a nun's costume. It was great fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were a nun. I thought you would have been one of the kids. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, so tell us a little bit, because you've been on TV. I have to mention this because uh, there are obviously uh, a few kids that remember this show, as well as adults that still watch it, have to watch it with their kids now. 
Go on. What did you do? <laughs> yes. So um, I, my first job out of college, I was lucky enough to work with uh, Justin Fletcher, who is Mr. Tumble. Um, and we did a live version of Mr. Tumble um, in Manchester uh, in 2015. And then they broadcast it uh, on CBeebies as well, uh, which is I think it's still available on iPlayer. And I think it actually had a rerun literally about a week ago because uh, people were texting me being like, oh, my God, I'm watching you. Um, but yeah, <laughs> just the most incredible time in Manchester, an incredible cast. Justin Fletcher is the nicest person I think I've ever met in my life. Um, and yeah, it was just, yeah, a really, really lovely experience, actually. I, I love working uh, in kind of children's TV and, and that kind of realm. It's just a little bit more relaxed and everyone's just really happy. <laughs> No, because I'm a. I, I always used to say to everybody that I wanted to be a children's TV presenter or a West End performer. <laughs> so you've literally you've lived the dream for me. I'm not jealous much. Um, <laughs> um, I was uh, when I was. I was. I know I've said this already before we came on, but um, I used to get so excited before I went on stage um, when I did. And um, I just does that still happen for you? Do you still get like re like the jittery feelings just before you go on? Yeah, I mean, at the minute doing Wicked, it's just a real dream come true. I mean, I've seen the show more times than I care to admit in public. Um, but, you know, the overture starts and, and like my heart just is just the most incredible feeling. And then you hear the audience and they're really excited for it. And you go out and you start singing and you're like, oh, my God, as if this is my job. And, you know, I think it's really important to just never forget how exciting it all is I think I mean I'm I'm quite I'm quite stagey anyway um but yeah I, it's never lost on me how very very lucky I am to be doing what I do it's just such a buzz um how are you doing at the moment so just to uh, bring it back to reality a little bit because um, otherwise I'll just keep talking about this forever um but um, obviously with lockdown um it has affected uh, the West End um mm -hmm. theatre a lot and I know that the question on everybody's lips is kind of how you guys are doing now um and, and what you're up to um, yeah so obviously uh the Society of London Theatres closed all of the theatres on March 16th I think it was something like that um, and it was, I mean, it was a really, really sad day. Um, I can't, I can't deny it. I think, I think I cried. I think there were tears as I was on the train home because I'd actually gone into work. I was at work um, when the announcement came out. So obviously going home that night was quite sad and, and what this is probably like the eighth or ninth week or something like that. So I've just tried to kind of get into a little lockdown routine, trying to kind of, you know, structure my life and actually it's been quite busy I feel like I'm busier now in lockdown than I was before uh, before this all happened I hear that a lot you know <laughs> I think I am as well um, but um, you've been you've been singing tell, tell us a little bit more about kind of what you've been recording and stuff yeah um so it, what's come out of this actually is and I know it's an awful time but there are a lot of creative projects happening so um i was on tour with avenue q um and we put together um a quarantine version of one of the songs um i've sent megan the link so she'll put it up somewhere i think um and i filmed another one uh which was kind of a, a new song written um to kind of show our appreciation for the nhs which i've just seen has gone live today um so i've not even had a chance to watch that video yet um but yeah just lots of little bits and bobs and you know Instagram content because you know you want to keep people excited and you you kind of want to keep your own creative flair going as well yeah it's so true I was saying to you before that I do a concert in my kitchen um when I'm cooking every night I want the neighbors to believe I'm a West End actor so I, I belt it out with the windows open <laughs> my partner shuts all the doors <laughs> um so I love it um the, I absolutely love it so I might send you one of my one of my videos and then we can we can put them together um, please do we must we must do a duet I'd love that <laughs> yay <laughs> Absolutely. I, I found, um, I saw that some, some people uh, within the industry, I saw it in the news, um, they've had to kind of start doing other jobs as well, um, just to, to kind of tie them by, I suppose. Um, have you found any of your friends doing that as well? 
Yes, so there's um there's a massive musical theatre cohort in uh, Sainsbury's in Sydenham. Um, so <laughs> if anyone fancies getting a little show, I'd suggest going there actually because you can probably get any of them to sing on cue. Um, and I've got a couple of friends uh, working for Domino's and Pizza Hut delivering. There's you know working for Hermes and UPS and stuff like that. So people are really kind of just having to buckle down and, and find something because we do need to kind of keep money coming in somehow yeah absolutely I think that it's uh it's really important and it's kind of good that they're giving back in a way because um it is a key worker job isn't it to be honest yeah, like working yeah. into it. so it's, it's also good that those opportunities have come available for them at this time um so I'm just I am pleased how that's that how that has worked out just so that they can kind of uh, come back with a bang afterwards um how do you feel um that it is going to be like when when you do get back um I think it's just kind of going to be like yeah go on stage remember everything <laughs> I mean I keep I keep saying this to my friends I would love to be a fly on the wall the day the day they say theatres can reopen and you know people kind of go back into a little bit of a rehearsal period I'd love to be there and I want the crew the directors to just say okay guys let's just get on stage and go and see what happens <laughs> because I think it would be so funny I'd love to see <laughs> because I I you know sometimes try and practice little bits in my room and you know some of it's there but little details have gone and I just think it would be really really fun to watch <laughs> I want to watch those when it comes to some of the practices. I think we should wear. sell tickets to them. I think people would enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, it should. Because social distance in any way should be like a reduced amount of tickets to come and see this one. You get it half price because it's gonna it's just gonna be the rehearsal. <laughs> um one thing actually about prices because i did want to ask that um, a few people have said this as well because they obviously we don't know yet but just your thoughts on it do you think that it's going to affect theater prices um if there aren't that going to be as many people allowed in what are your thoughts on that? um it's it's really difficult to speculate but i uh, it it's difficult because it's i've seen i read an article the other day um that where someone said that they couldn't afford to to put productions on if they aren't selling all of the tickets in in the house but at the same time because everyone is going through you know a really difficult financial time right now putting the prices up isn't really going to entice people to come to the theater either you know because you know entertainment is kind of the last thing that people spend money on do you know what i mean they have to spend it on the essentials first and then what's left over you know if we put the prices up what's left over might not be enough to buy a ticket to the city you know so I think yeah. there's going to have to be a real strategy in place and I don't necessarily think that putting the prices up is the one the way to go yeah I know that a lot of people um me included um and especially a couple of my colleagues that I know and one of my best friends Kieran um I know quite a lot of people um that will want to kind of support it as much as possible as soon as um there are tickets available again and as soon as it's open and as soon as we're able to go um I'm sure that there are many others out there as well because it like I said at the start it's just such an integral part of, of central London like it's just the West End in central London and Broadway in America like it's the two Two big big things um which you're a part of which is amazing um <laughs> can't go over this. um but, um but we, we want to support it because we want to see you on stage again i know i want to um i'm gonna wave at you and like can distract you and see if you see me <laughs> it's me um <laughs> But um, I know that, yeah, I know that um, there's going to be so many people. I think I can see that someone has even commented on the chat saying the enthusiasm in this chat has made me really excited for when we are able to come and see more shows. So I hope it does that. <laughs> um, do you, yeah. when do you think uh, that you will be likely to perform after lockdown? It's, it's, no one knows really. I mean, you know, I again, I hate to speculate on it because I think, you know, there's so much fake news going around and, and it's yeah, really it's kind true. of affecting people's mental health and, and stuff like that. So it's I don't like to speculate, but I do know that whenever we are allowed to go back, the actors will be ready and, you know, and we would love it if the audiences come and support us. You know, I think 
everyone will need a bit of escapism once all of this is over and you know once it's safe to be out and about let's go and visit the local butchers let's go and see the greengrocer let's go and see a show and really try and pump some money back into the economy I guess because you know we're gonna need it absolutely um and how long um sorry it's just because I have a little backtracking but how long do you usually um do a show for so obviously you get into the show how long how long does it normally last for for you uh, so normally uh on a musical you're normally contracted for for a year on like a, a big long running show like that sometimes if you're doing uh in uh in a rep or something like chichester or kill with house or something like that they're on for like three months or something like that but normally the big stuff you get a year's contract once you've had more experience um so you know when you've got like this portfolio you've got the track record um is it more likely um or is it just down to the individual audition that you do do you think it's a bit of both <laughs> A bit of both, I would say, actually. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, so I might have a chance um, if I can. <laughs> I think so. I I think so, absolutely. It's never too late, never too late. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm making this all about me today. <laughs> it's about him, it's about him. Um, <laughs> Um, Nicholas, I really, really enjoyed this. Um, I just, I really, I really have. I want to share the links where you're singing. Um, if you also, when uh, when it's available, you can share the NHS one uh, with us as well, because I think that that's really great to see. Um, I think anything to do with kind of uh, business, like organisations and, and the West End helping out and, and kind of showing the support to the West End at the moment, um, to the NHS at the moment as well, is brilliant um so yes please share that with me um Absolutely. and then i will share with you my video of singing and you will <laughs> put them together um, and we'll put it as a link on this chat again um and um, i'll try my best um but yes i i really I, I cannot wait to see you on stage again i know that a lot of people can't wait to see you on stage again um, I'm really excited for everything to get back to normal, however long that takes. Um, but uh, we will be there on the front row screaming uh, your name, unfortunately for you. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. Bring banners and roses to throw at the end. <laughs> I will, I'll bring banners and everything. <laughs> um, I wasn't even sure whether to dress up like paint, paint green on me today and do a little do a little audition for you, but I decided not. I know I was told not to. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm really glad to see you in high spirits as well, because I think that that's what people kind of need to see that, you know, like the, there's hope, there's there's dreams out there and there's and there's, we, we are ready uh, to go back. I know that everybody is, um, but just to uh, keep rehearsing indoors for now. Absolutely. <laughs> um, thanks again. You've really, uh, you've really boosted my day, as you can probably see. I'm grinning from ear to ear, um, and uh, your bright smile as well is just fantastic. Um, so you've uh, you've brought joy to my day, and I hope that you've brought joy to others as well. Um, have a lovely bank holiday. Thank you. Oh my God! Yes, that's tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah. Great. <laughs> Probably a day off from your day off. Um, so, um, <laughs> we won't. Uh, we won't be doing a video tomorrow, everyone. Um, just because I, I do need a. I do need a rest as well. Um, but uh, we will be back next week. Um, but yes, I think that this has really ended my week with a bang. So uh, thanks again. Um, and make sure that everybody watching just make sure that you support when they go back. Um, it's great to see that, that, you know, these are the people behind um, the scenes um, and these are the people that entertain us and bring people to London. So let's get that economy back. Thanks, Nicholas. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure I'll speak to you soon. We'll be going to become best friends, um, <laughs> whether you like it or not. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks again. I really, really appreciated you coming on today and I've enjoyed listening to your journey. Thank you Have so a great weekend. Bye. Not going up live. <laughs> <laughs> it's still going up. I'll come by. Um, right, maybe if we both. Hold on.
If we both leave the studio, then it might automatically go up. Bye. <laughs>